Just waiting for Claire to come. There we go. again <laughs> yeah so I'll get straight in I'll just talk for a couple of minutes and then it's part two of yeah so for those who don't know Claire and I um, spoke yesterday all about lichen sclerosis and um, we got to a certain point on her journey which was when she got um, had an ulcer for over a year that started off the size of about 5p got to the size of 50 pence piece tear on the perineum and went to the GP um, having once been told it was herpes and then found out it was vulva cancer. And that's basically where we had, we stopped, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Because yeah. it was all about lichen sclerosis. And then I've been thinking about it all last night because I find these things quite shocking and traumatic. And I just sort of want to say a couple of things and then it's the entire time is for Claire. I have a lady who joined my group um, about a year ago and she um, she found my book and thought she had vaginal dryness. And then she was told, no, she had thrush, and then she had this, this, and this. And this went on for a good six months, and she kept messaging me. And something just didn't feel right about it. I said, this just isn't right. And she knew in her own gut something wasn't right. And in the end, she took herself off and demanded to have a biopsy. She has got basically the first stage of vulva cancer. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah, and she said, it's, you know... Your group, my group, has saved her life, potentially. Mm -hmm. I also know um, about a lady who was 85, and um, she had been um, having problems for nearly 30 years in her vulva area, and that time had never been examined, and she got to 85. And then she went to, into a care home, and had been, had been complaining about problems in that care home for nearly five years. But when you're caring for someone in a care home, you can't get properly intimate, mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. And basically, she got so bad, a GP did come out and she had extremely advanced vulva cancer. And I do worry for how many women have serious problems in care homes that are going completely... That, that is the high age group, actually, which is in the 80s and 90s. Yes. Yeah. Are probably are in care homes. Yeah. So, um, and that's why I've, I've gone on further than just what I started off about, which was just vaginal dryness for my age group, because I know... There is so much more. So if you then pick up there, and yes, for anyone who didn't see yesterday's, you need to go back through my feed. Because although these say lives, um, mine go, I put onto my actual feed and they will be there forever to people to go back over. But what it doesn't do, it doesn't save any of the comments or questions people ask. But is Emma here again? Yes, yes, Emma's here. So, so Emma is here to answer any questions. Okay, Claire, so then you carry on from, you got to the point where, you had a 50 pence piece also that was cancer. Yes, so I went to the GP, um, thought it could be cancer. I was sent then for two week urgent referral, which happens when they think it could be cancer. Um, I got my results um, quite quickly um, in the April. Um, I was obviously I was shocked because I hadn't heard of, of vulva cancer or lichen sclerosis. I was told both at the same time I had both conditions and that probably the lichen sclerosis caused my vulva cancer. Um, it was a lot to take in, a big shock. Uh, we had to wait until I had scans, MRIs, um, blood tests uh, to find out what stage in it was. Um, I then went back and was told it was only stage 1B, which was quite a relief at the time. Um, and then I thought that, you know, it's just surgery, so it'd be easy. Once I got all the facts together, I then informed all my family and friends and told them what was happening. Um, quite quickly, I had my first surgery which was in the May in 2016. Um, when you have surgery, obviously it depends on, on what you have. I'll go through that after I've gone through my story. Um, but I had uh, what's called central node biopsy, which where they used to just automatically take all your lymph nodes out around the area of the vulva, because that's where it would spread to. Um, but you get lots of side effects and complications. So they don't seem to do that as much now. They do try and do a biopsy of, of the lymph nodes. So on the morning of my surgery, I had an injection put into the tumour, which was quite painful in itself. Um, you're laying on a 
hard table in a scanning room and um, they are scanning and watching the dye. They see where the dye goes from your tumour to see which lymph nodes it goes to first because that's where they assume where the cancer would go first when it's, if it spreads. Um, that took about an hour um, and, and left the mark on your groin whereabouts the lymph nodes are. Um, it only went to the right hand side, the dye. So they, when I had my operation uh, on my vulva to remove the tumour, um, they took out three of the lymph nodes that showed up on the scan in the dye. They tested that, them and it came back as negative. There was no cancer, so it was still stage right. 1B. Um, the surgery in itself wasn't that bad. I, did, I woke up, it wasn't really that much pain. Um, unfortunately, I was told the following morning that during my scan results of my first operation, the cancer had grown aggressively. Um, luckily for me, uh, vulva cancer is a slow-growing cancer normally in most people, which it did do over a long period of time. But in that last stages, it did grow aggressively. Right. And because of that, they couldn't get clear margins. And clear margins is when they take... Um, tissue around the tumour which isn't got any cancer cells in so there's less chance of it coming back so as they couldn't get clear margins because the tumour had grown, grown too close to my uh, bum and my bowels that they decided that I needed radiotherapy after which I had a couple of months after surgery because by the time you get over all the surgery and um, wait till it heals more before you start your radiotherapy which I had 25 sessions of which is every day um, five days a week uh, mm -hmm been five and six weeks which is that to me was the hardest part of, of having cancer um i didn't have to have chemotherapy luckily um but the radiotherapy over the time it starts off the first couple of weeks are okay but then it just gets worse um it's you know i was told it's like having a sunburn between was it directly at the tumor or your whole pelvic yeah. area yeah no luckily actually that they decided to aim straight for the tumor okay. rather than go anywhere else um, because you can't have radiotherapy more than once in, in the same place. Um, so they, they aimed it right at, the, at where the tumour was. Um, so all your vulva is inflamed, all your groin. The groins are the worst, actually, the, in, right the insides of your legs. So by the fifth week, it's like having third-degree burns. All the skin's peeling off, um, blistering. You can't walk, you can't sit. It, it is agonising. Everyone has that differently. Some people have it worse or, or, or better than others. Um, but that is, you know, what radiotherapy is. Um, and obviously, I haven't travelled to London um, from Kent. It's quite hard, hard going. Sorry, it's um, your dog. It's your dog. I can hear your dog in the water. <laughs> yes. um, so, yeah, so after that was over, I thought that was it. Um, but, you know, it took six months to get to that stage. Um, and then I had another scan just before the radiotherapy. And I noticed on the left side a node had swollen. Um, they thought that might have been to do with trauma or even uh, an infection, so they left it. I had another scan after the radiotherapy had finished. Um, and then I was told that the lymph node was still swollen. And my surgeon at the time said he wasn't happy to leave it. He wanted to go back in and operate and have a look, remove it in case. So in the December of the same year, 2016, I then had to have more surgery um, where they went into the left side groin to the lymph nodes. And while they were there, he, he noticed that a couple didn't look right. So he removed six and three came back cancerous. Um, so that then put me into stage three, C, right. and it was again another shock, thinking that you've done all what you've done for six months and got to do it all again. Yes. Um, there was quite a lot of complications I had. I was in and out of hospital, um, partly due to myself because I accidentally pulled the drain out and I had an infection. I went on holiday and I probably shouldn't have done. So lots of things sort of went wrong and I had to have more surgery because of that. I had um, uh, sepsis, I, then had, um, I had cellulitis as well from it. Um, so I was quite poorly and spent most of January in, in, in hospital um, waiting to get rid of the infection. I then had to have the drain put back in. Oh, lots of complications. We went on for a couple of months. So I was then told that because three were cancerous, um, that they decided they wanted to give me more radiotherapy. So hearing that after having it the first time, it was, it was shocking. I was told it wouldn't be as bad this time because they were going higher. Um, because this time they were going to aim at all my lymph nodes, the remaining ones on the left side, the ones on the right side, and across my abdomen. So because of that, I had to have 33 sessions this time. And it lasted, because it was over Easter, it lasted over eight weeks worth. So I had eight weeks of five days a week travelling up to London, having more radiotherapy. Um, obviously, the side effects you get for radiotherapy in itself are quite, quite hard. Um, I got through all of that. Um, and then I had... Um, 
my scan in the January, uh, July of 2017, where I was finally told that there was no sign of uh, disease, NED, mm -hmm. so that your class is sort of cancer free or that they know of. Um, but it was quite hard to be happy about that, I think, because at that stage, I'd gone through 16 months of treatment. Yeah, of yeah. going into autopilot. Everyone obviously reacts yes. differently to, to having treatment and cancer. Um, I just was quite strong-minded. I got on with it. Um, very much autopilot. And I think after I got told it was all clear, that was when it sort of just hit you like a ton of bricks. You think, yes, oh, yeah. it's over. And you, you can't even be happy. Everyone else is happy, but you're not. Yeah. But yeah. you find it quite hard to realise that you look back on all what you've gone through and, and what you know what's happened. And it's quite mm. a relief. But at the same stage, you're thinking, but am I? Is it going to yeah. come back? Yes. So often you've got all that side of it and all this, yeah. obviously the side effects that you have, the guilt you have, what you put your family through, um, the fact that you should be happy that you are classed in remission. Mm -hmm. But when you start to think about all the side effects you're left with, it is hard. You do have days where, you know, you get quite angry. Other yeah. days you think, right, you've got to be lucky. I'm still alive. A lot of people aren't. So you've yes. got to be lucky. But then obviously the radiotherapy put me straight into early menopause. Yeah. So I had to deal with all that side of it. Um, luckily, I had a very good specialist nurse who uh, referred me straight away to um, a menopause clinic. Um, they then, I then noticed a swelling in my leg. My leg was very painful, was hurting. Um, after all the radiotherapy burns had healed up, obviously the leg started to hurt more. You've got nerve damage, um, bowel problems, because the radiotherapy causes you to, to have diarrhea. Um, you can also nice. have bladder problems. You know, there's lots of complications you get. Most of them do get better over a short period of time. Some take months and some you never get over. Okay. Um, I was then, just over six months later, told that it looks like I've got lymphedema. So I was referred to the clinic, which that took about nine months, actually, to get referred and get seen and get yeah. looked at where they confirmed that they think that the second lot of radiotherapy caused my lymphedema. Um, I had 33 sessions. I had eight extra, which were higher boosted just on the left side and my left side is worse. So that's why they, they think it was a radiotherapy rather than the lymph nodes getting removed. Um, so I was left with lymphedema in my left leg, my abdomen, my pelvis and my vulva. So it all swells up with fluid because the lymph nodes are what moves the fluid around your body because they've been damaged and some removed. That doesn't happen. So you have to wear compression tights, which are quite like the white stockings they give you in hospitals before surgery. Imagine what they're like on. But are they on? Is that every day? Like, so in this heat, is it worth it? Worse than yeah, this heat? you have to wear it every day. Um, I've had a hard time with it because like many people have multiple conditions. What helps one doesn't help something else. So having to help my lymphedema is making my LS worse because obviously I don't want to wear underwear, nothing tight. I want to be cool. Yes. Um, because of the radio uh, radiotherapy damage, my groins are, the skin is just, it's, it's ruined. It, it's like paper thin, it blisters, it bleeds. So wearing tights or anything tight around the vulva area, the groin, um, on my left leg is I get pain all the time through nerve damage. It's all it's numb there as well. You can't feel. It's almost like when you have an injection in your mouth for a dentist. You've got that feeling all the time. Um, so wearing the tights was making other conditions worse. So you get up and decide what do I want to help today? Do I want to make my leg feel better or do I want to make my LS better? So it has been a long journey and I'm still not there yet trying to work out what's best for me. I have had numerous amounts of different types of tights one legged just to the knee but i need them all the way up and across yeah. my abdomen so it's very difficult i'm still is there, trying to get is there sorry is there specialist massages or anything is there any and there is a lot of that is hard because obviously it's national health it's not on it's not free um no. i was in a process before this lockdown actually i was having some treatment once a week where it's a machine a lymphosis machine which does that for you so yes. um, i don't have to wear the tights right up to, to my fire then um, and I can have that once a day but just as that lockdown happened they cancelled both my appointments and I couldn't carry on and but that you've got to buy yourself which is between 1500 to 3000 pounds to buy one of those and that's just for a one leg one because you know I've only got it one leg so I only need that so there are things you can do you've got to keep your leg um, 
sap also you've got to have moisturize all the time you can't risk getting any cuts um, because of obviously infection because your lymph nodes aren't working properly and they help fight infection for you so there's a lot of complications to it and i think the lymphedema for me um and the radiotherapy burns has probably been the hardest part of my cancer because a lot of people seem to think you can get on with it now you know you're free why, why are you like this you know you're happy um but it's hard because every day you're thinking it's back um you can't forget about it because every time i go to the toilet it's there because obviously that's where my surgery was i have ls as well which there is no cure for so at the back of your mind you're wondering whether that's going to cause my cancer to come back because obviously it was stage three c um you know my statistics i know you shouldn't really look at them because everyone is different everyone's cancer is different but you know you're told you've only got a 40 percent chance of living five years or more obviously the younger you are the, the fitter you are the better it is um but i try not to think about that too much but it is in the back of your mind that you know it, it could come back I, I, yeah so, so it is hard to carry on a normal life and you know you can't forget about it it's there every day with the conditions i've got from it it's just pain. sitting on your shoulder all the time are is you it? do you do you ever have pain-free days do you are you able to sleep all night or are you always in pain are you in pain sitting now yes i'm, I'm always in pain sitting yes. in now is hurting my leg because your leg needs to be raised yeah um, so my leg is it's a it's a it's a bit like rest leg syndrome in a way it's yeah. quite achy all the time it yeah. does hurt my ankle hurts my ankle ankle and, and and the bottom half of my leg seems to cause more problems during sleep sitting down now is also hurting uh, because i've got ls because my groins are are nerve damage yeah i'm in pain i'm in pain all the time i do take yeah. i take paracetamol all the time um every day and i try to take the stronger ones unless i have to Mm -hmm. um but you know because you've got to decide you know don't want to take strong painkillers all the time but yes no I'm, I'm in discomfort and pain for multiple conditions to do with yeah. the cancer and the ls all, yeah. all the time. and what about your um because you mentioned your bowels so is that made is it made you constipated or that have the runs uh, all the time no, it, it does the opposite during your radiotherapy um you have uh, diarrhea which for some people isn't as bad as that. We do get tablets for which helps you. I don't want to yeah. scare anyone out there that's obviously going back to start going through this. It, you know, it affects everyone differently. Some yeah. worse than others. And I, you know, I was quite unlucky that my treatment took so long uh, and yeah. sort of went, went wrong quite a few times. But yes, no, you have tablets you can take. I was going between six and ten times a day. And having to go on a train, you're panicking that you're going um, to go on a train. Brain. luckily i was on painkillers strong painkillers which make me constipated anyway so that was helping a bit that was making me less loose so it was wasn't as panicky going going on the train um now two years on um if i want to go i have to go so i have to think about where i am if there's a toilet nearby uh, i have a pack with me that has spare underwear in sanitary towel in cream in you know you have to take with you lots of stuff i've only recently stopped taking spare trousers um, with me i used to always take spare trousers as well that's a, a, a comfy blanket if you like uh, day trips i still do in the car you know i take spare things because you never know what's going to happen obviously with uh pelvic radiotherapy you have um lots of wind as well so you know quite often you're in a shop somewhere and you can't control yourself you're just you know you've got no choice so that's hard um, luckily my bladder wasn't affected at all uh, some people have problems with their bladder as well gets cystitis burning um, I did drink plenty you are told to drink plenty of uh, water during your radiotherapy um, I've had both my radiotherapies during the summer so I was drinking a lot anyway so I think that helped my bladder yes. um, but you know obviously you've got other symptoms as well fatigue um, I've now been told I've got chronic fatigue uh, I'm tired all the time um, even sleep doesn't help because you just are you're just tired you have to force yeah. yourself to get up and do things yeah. yeah so that part of it is also hard as well and what about your external i mean you said you you get sores and and rubbing and everything from the skin is so is so fragile what's your actual vulva like is that is that still raw or is it healed it's, yeah it's, it's, it's um yeah it's it's um damaged from the radiotherapy it's um looks nothing like it did before it is it's, it's almost like bruising total it's like blood blisters bruising the whole of it and my groins are I like that the whole time so All i find time. it like, difficult to tell what's ls and what's not luckily my dermatologist and my oncologist work together and i see them together i see 
dermatologist every three months and the gynecologist um uh, sorry the oncologist joins her clinic with me every six six months so she can see what is ls and what's not because i'm numb there um they think maybe i can't tell there's any itching anymore because of the area is still numb so they've got to be careful um but yeah it's it's, it's yeah it's totally ruined i was lucky where i had my tumor so i didn't lose it lose anything as such the, the ls has caused me more damage um so the actual surgery itself um, hasn't been too bad. Um, it was during some of the complications because I was in hospital the first time for five days. And after the third day, when I was allowed out of bed, um, I did actually split the stitches and all the stitches came out. So that obviously they don't re-stitch at this stage. So they have to um, let it just heal itself, which, which took longer. So because of that, it's tighter there now. So I've, I quite often rip if I sit down to go to the toilet, for example, um, the angle that you're at, I just rip open the game. Um, they have looked into it and decided what to do. But, you know, it does heal. I do use a steroid on it as well, even though she, the dermatologist doesn't think that it's, it's LS related. It is just tight where they can't stitch up. Some people do a plastic surgery to help that. Um, some obviously have the whole of their vulva removed. So in that sense, I was quite lucky that it hasn't caused any difference to look at for yeah. my surgery it's the actual the radiotherapy that have caused uh, the most damage and caused me lot long-term effects now yeah. so every time you go for a pee i mean i have a bit of soreness don't get me wrong there's no comparison and, and i find that enough so for you it must be like just burning acid onto it yes this is my friend yeah. because it is it's, it's it when the splits there it is very painful um because obviously urine goes straight there as well so it stings so yes it, it does heal up i go for about a month to six weeks where it's okay and then it just spits again sometimes i'll sit down a bit too fast on a hard chair and i can just it goes it splits um but you know there's nothing they can do um so it's just having to try and be careful really yeah. obviously yeah. i can never ride a bike or go on a horse or you know there's loads of things you can't do anymore because of even sitting on hard chairs for very long yeah. long journeys because yeah. obviously it hurts yes. um so yeah it does impact quite a lot yeah and um because i spoke to ellie the other day that's the one who had um, early menopause due to her treatment radiotherapy chemo and everything obviously her her surgery wasn't on the vulva area and her skin will be in much better quality than yours, but she uses dilators. But I, can you use those at all with all your problems? Um, yes, you are told to use them during radiotherapy because during radiotherapy, um, the, the vagina area can shrink and does shrink. So you are meant to use them. But that's the last thing you want to do when you've got third degree burns on the inside of your legs and vulva. So you don't want to. You're also given the plastic ones from the NHS. Yeah. Yeah which are awful and the thought of just doing that is just it's wrong so you just don't do it it puts you off and it did put me off and I, I regret that because you know it's caused problems now later on i did change them and i got some from sam um, evans yeah these uh, ones are called inspire yes which are different um yeah. and you, you meant to use them three times a week to help um, um the trouble is i can't because of where yeah. the split is um yeah. through, through the surgery it just splits open all the time so it's constantly split so yeah. I've constantly got, got some sort of cream on it to help yeah. um, because yeah. it is so sore. So using that is just pointless because it just yeah. splits. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And obviously you, intimacy is not possible when you're splitting, you know. Yeah, no. It, oh, it's, it's, no. It's, it's just, there's so many things that stop that. Yeah, the fact that right. it, it shrunk as well. So yeah. um, I did have a smear recently, which, which was... Um, How was that? It, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Um, I also had to have... Um, and the ultrasound as well um because they thought i was bleeding as well so that to uh, insert the wand for that as well which i was really dreading that um and that's like to have a, a wound biopsy for that but yeah it was it, it was painful but and it also i split as well which i expected it to happen so yeah yeah, yeah i mean you, you are um all of you ladies that have this i mean any cancer any part of the body is truly awful any cancer full stop but the surgery from vulva cancer is just horrendous because of where it is and what it affects peeing, pooing, intimacy, sitting down, going to a restaurant, going to the cinema, going on a holiday. Does it stop? It can stop or hinder so much in your life. And this is mm. why um, we need to examine ourselves and become, you know, become mm. aware. If it had been caught at stage one, instead of mine was obviously stage three C, mm. um, then I would have 
just had surgery, minor surgery, which yeah. quite often you're in and out the same day um, yeah. for having surgery. Um, you know, four or six weeks of not being able to sit down and, and get over that. And then that, that is all the treatment you would need. Yes. Um, yes. But because mine was caught so late, um, yeah. which is why I did start the awareness, because I was so angry that it was caught so late yeah. that I'd been missed so many times. Because yeah. during my last smear test, I had the tumour. I had cancer. Yeah. And the nurse never realised that. Yeah. So, you know, if, if I had been more you know, determined and demanded more things done, as well as them, the all nurses and, and, and GPs knowing more about LS and about vulvar cancer, then, you know, I, I would have got diagnosed earlier. Yes, if I got diagnosed with LS much earlier, I might still have got cancer, but I would have been aware about cancer, That's vulvar right. cancer, and it would have been caught a lot earlier where I wouldn't have been left with with, with so many problems now, which, which you know, which which make it just so much harder. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Everybody doesn't go through the same as me. Like some people go, it's better. Some even worse. So every cancer is different. Yeah. Um. So you know, you can't look at what happened to me and think that's going to happen yeah. to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So anyone who's watching that's just been diagnosed, you know, please don't worry. It might not be as bad. You know, it's not very often that you know you have so many. I ended up having four surgeries in the end on on the on the groin because of complications but most of the time it is more more straightforward um mm -hmm. but some have obviously radiotherapy and chemotherapy before the surgery some after and some don't have any yeah yeah um and can you show the ladies your daily routine of your creams or what you have to use for this part of your um yeah you, you, you said you're going to show creams today and what you have to do yes, for so this part mm -hmm. this part is i was given um double base moisturizer which a lot of people get for skin conditions because it's stronger moisturizer i have to put moisturizer on my my legs my groins uh, my vulva uh, every tw at least twice a day because of lymphedemia try and keep it soft i have to do that as well obviously because of the ls as well um i also use the dermal like i showed yesterday as well which a lot of people get for skin conditions um I use that as well i use coconut oil and emulsifying ointment um as barrier because obviously between your legs and you've got the, the groin area rubs when it's hot yeah. and that is where my skin falls off that is what the skin is does always it actually does it actually fall off yes it blisters up and it just comes off because it's just yeah especially when it's hot rubs yes. yeah. to wear the, the tights made it worse which is why i can't do that um so yeah that's basically what i use most of the time it's just making sure i use a steroid for the ls um, which I use twice a week now because I, I you know I've been in remission from a less really for, for the three years um, yeah. I've been told it's still active but I can't tell because it looks no different to me and I don't get any itching anymore um, but I still continue with, with the steroid I use coconut oil as well sometimes on my groin because I find that helps quite a lot with the radiotherapy damage okay. um, and but I do most I you have to moisturize often uh, which is hard to do when you go out for the day or you work because you can't really stop every couple of hours and yeah. just the cream on so in the evening I, I do pay for that yeah. because I haven't had to do it so it's worse in the evening which yeah. is why if I go out for a long day somewhere or I'm working I try not to do anything that evening because yeah. I'm in too much agony we're just, yeah. we're just going to work or having a day out or even going shopping for a few hours the following day I pay for it yeah. because my leg hurts I'm in a lot of pain um my groins hurt the, my vulva hurts um so you have to you have to think about that think ahead about what, what you're going to do if you're doing something one day try not to do anything the day after so you do things because otherwise Pace, it's all pacing isn't it yeah. yeah and what do you work do you work full time you on your no, legs I've, I've part time now which is good i do a lot of walking in my job so that helps um standing still or sitting like this is probably the worst thing to do with, with yes. uh, with lymphedema because yeah. you need, do need to be active and, and to move quite a lot um, and try to keep your legs up where you can so once I get home from work or a day out the first thing I do is, is I sit on the sofa and my legs up high and um, which helps a lot it makes a difference for the following day if I get a chance to do that yeah okay and can you have baths are you allowed to have baths with all your um, yeah you can I, I don't now I haven't been able to bath properly really for the three years um mm -hmm. I used to love baths but now I just find it uncomfortable when I sit down it just hurts mm -hmm. um it hurts my leg as well so I do have baths but not very often and I don't yeah. stay in them as long as I used yeah. to but that's different for everyone some yeah. people can have baths yeah. Okay. And then you said you want, so you were put into early menopause because of your treatment. So do you want to say what that has done to your whole body probably as well? What, what happened? With, uh, well, that it, it's in, I think I was going through menopause before because I was still getting quite hot and I had like, night sweats even before this, but straight after it was just, I was getting hot flushes straight away every day for your whole body. Uh, getting hot, hot at night, waking up soaking wet, couldn't sleep either. 
Um, I was only sleeping for about an hour and a half and then waking up, an hour waking up. So I was put on HRT straight away, which improved the sweats and the nighttime um, sweats, flushes stopped instantly. It took about a month for my sleeping pattern to get better. Um, so that helped. I still need to look into it more because um, I don't think I'm being treated but you know, how you should be with, with the menopause side of it because my hair's still falling out. I still have quite a lot of brain fog, which they think is partly due to the radiotherapy mm -hmm. and also due to menopause because I do forget my words quite often. Yeah. Um, I forget what I want to say. I do use my hands quite a lot. Um, I go through stages where I'm, I'm all right and then other times I think I'm getting better and I start to get worse again and I can't yes. remember words yeah. um, or I can't remember what I was going to say, which I yeah. think is probably more... More menopause now because it's well, it, it is. So I was chatting to you, wasn't I, privately the other day, and um, I think you could. Obviously, I don't know about any of this regards your whole treatment, but as a general, we do know testosterone can really help with brain fog, you know, and, and muscle and fatigue and tiredness. And obviously, you've got a all your treatment that has given you these symptoms, and plus menopause as well potentially. So you're you're going to have it double whammy. Mm -hmm. So if you can. Um, yeah, if you can somehow try and find a specialist to try and who really understands what you've gone through and to, you know when you look to Ellie it's made such a difference for her getting on to the right HRT mm. um, but do you I mean you talk about the skin splitting again I don't know anything about what you are and aren't allowed to do but has anyone suggested local eastern outside externally because the ladies who in my group who have splitting due to vaginal atrophy and some of the ones who've had lichen sclerosis to come across, um, they use the uh, local eastern externally, and it's making a huge difference to the quality of their skin. Has this ever been suggested? No, I was just given HRT. Um, I was given Vagifen to use twice a week, mm -hmm. and apart from that, that has been it. So yeah. obviously, if we're following you and Diane, I've realised that, you know, I didn't even know a lot of symptoms I was having were even menopause because you just put menopause down to the obvious ones, which is your period stop, um, you, you get hot flushes. I mean, you don't really think about no. all the other symptoms that there are that yeah. I realise yeah. that, oh, I'm having all those. Yeah. So, yes, I don't think I'm on a strong enough dose and I need to, when this lockdown's over, I'm going to go back to my GP. Yeah, you need to... You, get referred you, you, back yeah. to, to the to original yeah. menopause clinic that I was going to and maybe look into doing more for it. Yeah, you need to look at your thyroid as well, because obviously there's lots of reasons your hair can come out. Um, but you really need to talk to your dermatologist um, about using, you know, I, I use this, there's two types of local actual cream. There's one called Ovestin. I don't, I personally can't use that one, um, but I use this one. And there's Estriol cream. And, um, you know, women, women who've had these episiotomies, in some countries who are ahead of the game, um, and especially if they're breastfeeding, their estrogen is very low, so episiotomies don't heal as well. And if they have someone on the ball, they are given local estrogen to help that splitting skin heal. Um, so it's something you really need to look into because yeah. uh, you, know, um, you deserve to have good quality of life, don't you? And to be as symptom-free as can be I think possible. a lot of it is, is, is that when you, when you have cancer, you, you, do, you feel guilty about you know you're alive so you should be happy with that and that should be the end of it mm -hmm. um so it's only been recently i suppose i've started to think more about my quality of life because you know for quite a while i just was waiting for it to come back i thought you know i've got to be lucky if i get a year or two and that is how you think so yeah. i just i'm lucky to be alive you know i don't plan ahead as much as I, as, I, as I did before um and i started to think just be happy that you're still here but now i am thinking more about quality of life and about pain and i've been um, looking more into the lymphedema side of it to try and get that organised. Yes. So hopefully, yeah. when the lockdown's over with, yeah. I'll be able to yeah. go back to sorting out, maybe buying the machine, and look more into the menopause side of it. Um, and yeah. I'll do all that now. Well, you know, you I can get a lot of advice from myself, Diane, and, and, and Dr. Newson. And tomorrow, I'm talking to a lady. She's at, I mean, I, again, I don't know if this is going to help you or not, but I'm talking to someone, I have something called myofascial release every month um, but part of her training and she's qualified in and hospitals send ladies to her those that have had um, mastectomies and they get all you know lymphedema and scarring and all sorts so she works all up here so it might be interesting I don't know but um, so the fascia release and drainage and all those sort of things and um, so I'm just trying to talk about different things that connect to one and um, because you do deserve to um, try and get the best treatment that you can and if you've got you know you are through menopause so not only have you got lichen sclerosis have the vulvar cancer you've also got vaginal atrophy and each one of those needs its own thing and the vaginal atrophy part basically needs estrogen because you use vagifem don't you 
Yeah, so I was, I was given that and I only told to use it twice a week and I, I noticed no difference at all. I no. actually stopped using it in the end and then I started back using it again, but I just, I've seen no difference. So after seeing what you said about it, you can use it a lot more than twice. Yes. Um, I definitely will go back. I think the aftercare for cancer is just, in every cancer, is just, it's diabolical to be honest, because yes. once you, you, you give your treatments finished, you are just left. Um, yes. you know, lucky ones might get past sent on to other departments you know i was lucky enough to get uh referred to uh lymphedema but once i got there you know there's, there's no money there there's just no, no support there so you have to just get on with it a lot of the things we find out we find out by accident or from yes. social media other people have had it you know because yeah. you're not any help you're yeah. not giving any help at all after you you are just basically left no yeah. one not no no doctor oncologist has ever asked about my sex life i've never no. asked anything after either mm. you are just literally just left so yeah. you have to a lot of people just get on with it and they don't realize yeah. there are um, certain yeah. things out there that you can be referred to and get extra help for so that i'm finding out more now and starting to think right i need to start looking into other ways of making my quality of life better um, yeah. but you know it's hard to do because it's not there you know and then the thing is with this a um a lot of those who do get the extra help, unfortunately, they have to pay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And it's not, and it's not, yeah. you know, and it's, 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 yeah, and it's not fair and not, and um, at all. And we need to, yeah. Once you've had your treatment, and obviously the goal is that they make you better and put you into remission. That is the end goal. But we then need to have a new strategy for the next stage on, where you can, you know. Um, look at your sex life and if you can't have sex life then that isn't the be all and end all you can still have a relationship with your husband you married for a reason but um, try and get the best of quality of life for you and although you say the vagifem you don't think is helping you um, again I can only say this from myself I don't understand how much you're allowed to have because you've had cancer and all those things but I assume you're fine because you're on HRT but what Vagifem is doing, even if you don't notice it internally, it will be keeping the vagina itself healthier. So when you have a smear test, it, it's potentially going to be easier and all those things. But yeah, twice a week is actually the minimum amount. And um, you can go up to, up, to, up to five times a week. But what they suggest, if you notice no difference with two, you go every other night and you find your spot that is good for you. Um, and I have an email from the head you know, of the British Menopause Society saying five times a week is fine but obviously I'm not saying this for cancer patients I'm saying this as non-medical person because I don't want anyone thinking she said because I'm not um so how do you feel so you sound like you've obviously got over the original part and now you've got some anger in there haven't you obviously to try this is what I mean your your frustration and everything is coming out through your campaigning because yes, you've now got the you're aiming it there now yeah, yeah, I was angry, so I'm angry because yeah, of course you are. I, that I know nothing about. Everybody that I spoke to um, would, didn't know about it. The only person I, I've met with with vulva cancer are those on forums that have it themselves. Uh, when you tell people you've got vulva cancer, they say, where is it? What is it? And never heard of it. Yeah. Um, there are five gynecological cancers, but vulva cancer and vaginal cancer are the taboo cancers. And as we call them, the poor relations, because, because it affects less people, they don't care. And, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of people also are embarrassed as well. There are um, a lot of people that are diagnosed with vulva cancer yeah. and that tell their friends and family that they have cervical cancer. Yeah, sorry, can I interrupt? That has just completely reminded me. What's the youngest patient in your group with vulva cancer? In our group, it's early 20s, but in the UK, yes. it, the earliest, uh, our youngest person to be diagnosed is age 20. Yeah. Um, so it can affect any age. Um, it is quite rare to be that young. Uh, yes. There's not that many a year uh, that are diagnosed in their 20s. Okay. Uh, the, you know, the older you get, the more the risk is. Um, but, you know, there are 1,337 women diagnosed with vulva cancer each year, mm. and that's three a day. Um, yes. you know and 442 of those a year will die that's one a day so yes. you know we still matter even though there's yes. not many of us yes. um, a lot of the GPs think that you're too young to have LS but also vulva cancer so um, and a lot of people have been told oh you're too young for that if someone does know about yes. it and mentions it, oh you're too young for vulva cancer yes. Um, yes. which is not true um, yes. it, it's getting higher in the 30s and 40s age group um, I was only one of 40 um, in the year I was diagnosed okay. um, at that age, at 43. Um, you know, the older you get, obviously, the, the higher 
the percentage is because uh, I think it's um, 148 are diagnosed between the ages of 30, uh, 65 and 70. Right. So that is the most um, a year. So it is obviously affecting more people older, but it's affecting more younger now as time's gone on. And I think some of that is down to the HPV virus. Yes. Um, you know, seventy percent of those with vulvar cancer have got HPV. I, I haven't because mine was oh. elevated rather than the yeah. precancer vein. Um, but you know, it can affect us. So does it really matter if it's one or one thousand? We still, okay. we still count. You're, you're a mother. You're a mother. You're a wife. You're a sister. You're a sister-in-law. You're important as anyone yeah. else because whatever so, cancer that is. So, so that anger sort of made me realise that you know someone's got need to do something. I did find. Um, uh, when I looked on, on the internet, I found a few uh, gynecological cancer charities, but they didn't really concentrate much on vulva cancer. It was all on cervical and ovarian because obviously it affects more of those and more dive ovarian. So you can, you know, I, I understand there's going to be more awareness and more, more money into research for that, but it doesn't mean that you still can't do, you know, awareness for the other cancers. So yeah. I got quite angry with that really, and that's what sort of so I started doing my own. I told my story in 2017, which went viral. It went in all the papers and all over the world. And I, quite a lot of people contacted me to say they didn't know, hadn't heard of it, or I think I've got that. What if you got diagnosed because of reading my article? Yeah. Well, that done. Meant that, that, you know, we need to do more. Um, two years on, uh, it still feels like we're not getting anywhere because there's still some cancer charities that don't even bother to use vulva cancer in their hashtags, which hashtags help a lot on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and they still, sometimes they just put ovarian, cervical, womb and more. They don't yeah. even bother to actually yeah. say the word vulva and what are, yeah, cancer. And what are the more? What are more. The more? Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, and the same with HPV link with uh, cervical cancer. There's a chance where they can, you know, get people to hear about vulva cancer by mentioning yeah. it when they HPV or mention cervical cancer and they don't yeah. Yeah. you know it just takes somebody to hear it to think oh what's that vulva cancer you know yeah. and they might think if they got a lump or an ulcer or anything to, to think back that it's, it's a cancer so I should go to the doctor yeah well, well done and I mean you're doing amazing and you and Emma together and we need to talk about VIN yes VIN um, it's a pre-cancer which is HPV linked um, I don't have either um, but you can also have what's called DVIN, which is associated with uh, with lichen sclerosis, which is, is more chance of that turning to cancer if it's DVIN rather than the usual type um, VIN. I don't know a great deal about that. I've put some stuff on, on my grid uh, to help with that, those that don't know or have got it. Um, sometimes I find that having VIN is worse than having, having vulva cancer because and lichen sclerosis because VIN just keeps coming back for some people they have to have similar surgeries to vulva cancer or laser they have a type of chemo cream which is uh, burning and painful and you know some people just, just get VIN 1 um, which doesn't need much treatment and can go away but when you've got VIN 2 and, and 3 you know there's more chance of that coming back mm. and the, when it gets to, to VIN 3 more chance of it turning to Actually, cancer yeah yeah um yeah it is, it is it is an absolute minefield isn't it the whole thing and how are you coping just your mental health mentally i think that's why i do the awareness actually and uh, i started my own vulva cancer uk support group where there's over 130 of us in that now um having other to talk to makes a big difference i talk to, to a few of them privately rather than on the group but we know when i'm having a bad time and they help me and i help them mm -hmm. obviously emma that runs life and sclerosis mm -hmm. uk awareness helps me a great deal um we, we talk to quite a lot and you know she picks me up when i'm down um but you know and obviously my family and friends but it's just that's how i suppose i, I can deal with it by knowing i'm helping somebody so that's why yes. i do the uh, the awareness and the website and do everything that i can obviously it's all all free that i do i don't charge anyone for it um we, we get webinars and we get other doctors to help we do a podcast so you know quite a lot of people have come on board yourself you know sam uh, loads of companies and other people have helped me especially on twitter to try and get the word out and help us so that, that's i suppose that's what's helping my mental health is by helping other people i suppose i mean you're doing amazingly well and i want to then talk about um consultants with this lockdown and women being seen and what have you i've got so many women in my group who've obviously got problems and they're being diagnosed over the phone with thrush and um, this was the case of someone you know the other week um sort of diagnosed over the phone and 
I said, you know, if nothing's gone within a week, you need to go back because I don't, you just, you know, that it's almost being used as we can't see you. But uh, my GP, if I need to see my GP today, I can see my GP, whatever I have, regardless of COVID or not. Um, but, and this lady actually does have something wrong with her. We went to the GP today and it's actually a giant Bartholin's gland um, where she was, you know, given cream for something completely different a week ago. And I do know that some of your ladies are needing to be seen, but they're being refused at, at one hurdle, but you're emailing consultants and saying, no, we can see them. Is that correct? Yes, it's, it's the amount of messages we've been getting. Um, we're getting told on the news and also by a lot of the GPs that follow me on Twitter that the NHS is open. Who's it open to? I think accident and emergency may be open, but all the appointments, um, you, you've got two sides. Obviously, you've got the cancer side of it, which is slightly different. Um, they are getting cancelled one face to face, but some of them are getting spoken to on the phone. Are you happy at the moment? And no, yes, I'm fine, they're saying. And that's okay. I'll see you in clinic once this is over. And they're happy with that. But some aren't even getting that. They're just getting their appointments cancelled with no follow up or told after um, COVID. Um, and you've got the other side as well, which is in our LS groups. A lot of people um, on the LS groups um, don't get to see gynecologists or dermatologists very often as it is. Sometimes you wait months for your next appointment at all. And they're getting cancelled with no follow-up or not even the chance of having a phone conversation. And if you do get a phone conversation, you can't look at your vulva on the phone. Yeah. Um, some are sending email pictures in um, and they are uh, managing to see them a week or two later in the clinic face-to-face. -face. But, you know, some patients need to be seen face-to-face. -face. As long yeah. as they're happy to go, um, yeah. you know, we're getting told the clinics are open. Um, and they will see face to face, but it just seems that you know it's not always happening. So Emma has um, got email addresses of a few uh, co uh, consultants, and we speak to quite a lot of them on, on Twitter as well that have helped us in our campaign. So Emma did uh, email one of them and said, "Like we've got somebody in our group that's that's struggling to get past the secretary, if you like." Yes. Yeah. The, the sh shut. The hospital was shut. They've actually told her yeah. there is no appointment. She's got a lump and was told she might need a biopsy, so she was worried. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Thanks to Emma, uh, the consultant managed to ring the patient at home and got her in four days later. And oh, amazing. But amazing. that's taken Emma to do that, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, something's not right. You know, we're getting told the NHS is open, but too many appointments are getting cancelled. Yeah. Yes, they might be urgent to some people, but they're urgent to us because we yeah. don't know what's, what's happening. We don't know what's, if yeah. what we're seeing is urgent until yeah. we see a doctor who has to be face-to-face. -face. So... Yeah. But that is quite, I get quite angry with that still now, like that they're not, they're not doing enough. It was hard enough to get diagnosed before this happened. Um, so now it's getting harder. So, you know, GPs need to pass on the information to those that are cancelling appointments and ringing patients that, yeah. you know, if you are worried, then we will still carry on with an appointment yeah. on the yeah. phone maybe or video link. And they can decide then whether to bring you in face to face. But sometimes it's not even getting to the phone call stage. They're just cancelling. So yeah, it's, it, it's not on because there's going to be so many cancers across the board and, and health conditions that are, are going to be missed. And then you're going to have a new wave of problems later down the line. Yes, we are. Well, we've already yeah. spoken about that, that there's going to be a huge impact to COVID, uh, unrelated events with cancer patients, people that are too scared to go and aren't going. Yeah. Yeah. And putting it off because they're embarrassed yeah. anyway and using probably yeah. using the virus as an excuse. I won't, I'll leave it till mm -hmm. after. You yeah. can't leave cancer. You yeah. can't leave a lot of conditions. No. Um, you know, the sooner it's caught, the quicker you get seen, the quicker you get to have surgery and the less you have to go through. Catching yeah. any cancer at stage one makes a huge difference. So yeah. please, anyone out there has got anything they're concerned about, lumps or bumps, be determined. You obviously don't be rude on the phone, but you need to stand up for yourself yes. and ask yeah. a second, third opinion if you have to. But yeah. make sure yeah. you get seen if you have got a lump or an ulcer, something that's different for you. Please make sure that you get seen yes. and a doctor does actually look at your vulva and mention um, LS and vulva cancer because sometimes they don't think themselves about it, especially yeah. if you're younger. Um, but yeah, if you want to be seen, then just make sure that you are seen. Yeah, yeah. And the young girl you say in your group who's 20, um, how is she doing? How... Um, the, the one that's 20 is not in our group. I just know okay. that for the statistics that the youngest person is 20. Okay. And we've got a couple that are in their late 20s, which luckily it was caught early. So, you know, okay. they're doing OK. The majority yeah. of those in my group are between the age of uh, 40 and 70 in, in my okay. support group. Okay. All at different stages. Um, some 10 years uh, have, been, have been in remission for. Um, okay. Some only just literally going through surgery now. So we're helping them go through it, let them know what happens stage by stage. 
Um, again, every person is different and every cancer is different. So they might not get the same reaction that other people get, but we're there to help them. Um, we, we give our tips about, you know, after surgery, you need to get yourself a garden, um, recline a chair to sit on because you can't sit upright, ways of helping, use ice packs, um, you know, just, just ways of helping them through it. Yeah, and your family have been amazing, haven't they? Your husband and children. Yes, yes. Actually, when I used to go to the clinics, um, my husband used to come with me all the time. Uh, I did stop him in the end because he was asking stupid questions. But um, he did come with me, and they always seemed quite surprised that he was there. Um, I get the impression a lot of people with any cancer, um, but especially with vulva cancer, that their husbands or partners leave. Um, yes. um, because of obviously going through cancer with them or even the after effects of it um, a lot of marriages break down from yeah. it uh, yeah. they, they always seemed um, quite happy and even the letters that we used to get that they used to send my, uh, my GP that you're copied in would, all, would always say that um, my husband was there with me yes. they were always yeah. quite happy that, that he was still he was still, still here um, so I think it's quite rare for husbands to stay around okay. yeah. um, with most cancers but especially with something like this and is your is your GP good with you now? Are they I, is your treatment I good? I haven't seen my GP in four years. Okay. Because I don't think I could see him to be honest. Um, no. I've seen a couple of other GPs in the, in the same practice, um, but I don't see GPs very often anymore because I just see my consultant dermatologist and I talk to those. I've been quite healthy otherwise with other things anyway, so I haven't needed to go to to, to a, a GP. Um, but I'll definitely be different in the way I approach what's wrong with me now and be yes. more assertive and look into things a bit more. Yeah. And uh, so when they heard your diagnosis, were they shocked your practice or? Um, yes. Um, when it went into my local paper, um, I left a couple of copies in there and I actually left one on the top. Um, I haven't seen um, my actual GP because there's multiple GPs that didn't recognize the symptoms but the, the main one um my husband um he's the one that speaks to him and you know that he couldn't help me anymore every time my husband went in there because we needed something got it straight away I'd get appointments very fast um but yeah I, I have obviously I've also sent them the training resource because uh the Eva pill of um I've got an online training resource which I mentioned yesterday. I put it on my on my grid today. Um, so it's good to go out to all nurses and GPs. So if anyone watching is a GP nurse or works in in you know women's health, especially uh, in the lower part um, of the bodies, um, pelvic for example, um, please look at this resource and get all your staff to do it because a lot of nurses have never heard of LS. No. Some don't even know about vulva cancer yeah. or should it's somebody only in their 80s and 90s that will get it. Yeah. So, you know, they need to be aware of it. So I did email that resource to my own GPs. Yeah. So we've got uh, nine minutes left. Um, is there anything else you want to say, Claire? Is there anything you forgot yesterday or...? Um, Basically, really, is just to check your vulva at least once a month. We're told to check our breasts and other things, reg irregular bleeding. You know, we're not really talked about gyne health. So just make sure you check once a month when you have a shower. Use a mirror to check. Um, and just so you know what it looks like, because a lot of people have no idea what it looked like before. So they're not quite, and they'll regret that because they're unsure if that lump's always been there. Or, or So just look regularly once a month, anything you're not sure of, um, lumps, ulcers, because there are seven types of vulva cancer and they're all slightly different. Right. But the main, the main symptoms are, are a lump or an ulcer. Um, because I didn't have any bleeding, but you can have bleeding, um, pain, soreness, anything that's different for you. Then just yeah. make sure you, that you go and see your doctor. And if you're not happy with what they say, then get a second opinion. Yeah. And if yeah. the treatment they give you isn't helping, then please go back and tell them that you've been back. Because um, sometimes if you see different doctors or they don't look at your history, they don't know you've been in two or three times maybe with Thrush. Um, that's one thing I regret doing. I wish I'd said to some of the GPs that I saw, um, you know, I've been here quite a few times now with Thrush and it's not working. I didn't say that because mm. I suppose I assumed they would look down at, yes. at my history and know I've been there with, with Thrush. Yeah, um, they so don't, they, do they? Just, they just look at what's in, yeah, with yeah, what you're going with. So, so just make sure that if, if something's not right for you, then go and get sorted out. Don't be embarrassed um, because doctors, GPs, nurses have seen it all before. You just need to go because it's always in the back of your mind. It was in the back of my mind for a little while. I didn't want to go because I've done it so many times, but it was you can't forget about it. It's there. So yeah. it's like smear test as well. You know, you know you've got to go, but you pull it off. And when you do go, you feel so relieved, weight lifted off the shoulders, the same yeah. with any symptoms you have. So just go and get seen. Yeah, okay. So as I said at the beginning of this, um, 
because I saved this because I want it to be on my grid forever. Because if it's on the IG Live, it's gone in 24 hours. And there's so much information that I think is important to keep. But by doing so, all the questions go. So hopefully Emma has answered them all. But if anyone wants to come back and put those questions on this when it's there, then please do so because it helps other people who see them later. But they can go to your page and your website to find all the information, can't they, on this? I, I, will, I will put, I've got quite a lot on my grid already. Um, mm -hmm. Following our Facebook page is more helpful because I can put actual articles and links on there to help. Yeah. If you think you've got LS or you have got LS and you're not already in our support group, then please go onto the website and you'll find the women's support group join it because you get loads of helpful tips advice about the steroid how to use it because there's lots of things i didn't get to mention um, about using a steroid how often to do it how much you use um, some people say to have a warm bath before rub it well you've got you've got six minutes to do it claire well yes so so there are, there are lots of things that I haven't got a chance to mention to ours. So please yeah. join our support group, yes. my members. Um, and also, if you have been diagnosed with vulva cancer in the UK, then find me, join that group. If you're not from the UK, still message me because I can give you other groups for, for in your area um, and that can help you. Um, obviously, we get loads of messages already, me, myself and Emma, or email us. That's also on my um, website. Um, please, like... We don't mind getting messages. We know that a lot of you um, are scared or worried that we have LS. I've been messaged quite a few times asking me what my... And they always start off with sorry to bother you or I hope you don't mind. I don't mind. Please bother me. Um, yeah. What my cancer looks like, what a tumour looks like, what symptoms I have. Please message me. Um, I can tell you. On my grid, I put lots of information about risks because I didn't get a chance to mention today the risks, the stages, the treatments. Um, all that's probably already on my grid from, from the last couple of years. So look for it. I will put more on in the next coming days as, as well as Emma will. The questions that, that she's answered today, she will obviously do wonderful pictures like she does for me, um, which we've got on our grid to help anyone. Um, but yeah, please just go to the doctors if you're concerned about anything. Yeah, and I'm always happy, you know, in a few months' time, we can do all this again. You know, it's fine. Um, because things get Emma, lost. Yeah, I did say to Emma about maybe me and her doing one as well, just concentrate yeah. just on LS, because she's got a story to tell. Um, yeah. Although my LS did turn to cancer, um, it didn't really impact a great deal over my, uh, over my life, as much as it right. has Emma. You know, Emma's story is also on her website. Uh, please read that. But hopefully she'll come on with me and, and do one similar. And she can talk about what, what she went through. Talk more yeah. about the LS side. You know, the other treatments that there are. Because she's yeah. had treatments done. She had LS uh, and was diagnosed younger and treated badly. So hopefully we'll get to do one or yeah. talk more about LS. Yeah, I did one with Emma um, at my house over a year ago, didn't I? And the treatment she had with forcing the vagina open, wasn't it? With dilators just yes. forced in. And it yeah, all... I, yeah. I, I was extremely lucky with my LS side of it. It mm. didn't really impact. I did stop doing certain things and it did cause me problems. Um, but it was mainly just the itch and the sores. I didn't get the tear until, until my late 30s, whereas... Emma's gone through quite a lot more so we talk about her story and more about what we can do because there's loads more tips we can give and things we've used ourselves yeah. you know you know cold packs ice packs loads of things different yeah. types of knickers as well you're told to wear white cotton yeah. underwear you know, we've had company derma silk for example they used to be on the nhs used to be able to get um knickers from them made of silk the comfortable material they, they helped me quite a deal um with my um, radiotherapy burns, actually, because they're quite comfortable. Because knickers you can't wear yes. aren't comfortable. So you need to find what works for you. So we've got loads of other tips and things we can help. Yeah. So, you know, we can do that again. And you can maybe put in questions before we come on and answer them for you. Okay, well, well done. Um, time is almost gone again. Um, you're both, you know, you're both absolutely amazing what you're doing. All the time you give um, up for free. And if we can all, you know, if these videos, I mean, and a few hundred have watched them all so far. And if, you know, it helps one person, then that it's, it's all worth it. And it's just awareness of these different things yeah. and it's helping each other out. It is frustrating that patients like us have to do this sort of thing because there isn't enough being done. Because, you know, the gynecological cancer charities um, don't do a great deal, I don't think, on social media for awareness. No. Um, at the the Eva Pill have done quite a lot the last couple of years. Now is their Get Lippy campaign going on. Please follow the Eva Pill. Um, but, you know, you've got other charities that aren't, you know, they're not doing yeah. enough, I don't think. And I get quite frustrated with that. Um, I imagine that I'm, my face probably on a lot of dartboards in their offices. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, the same with, so, you know, with, with skin side of it, the LS side, you know, it's a skin condition and that's left out. So yeah. I and, you know, eczema, because they affect more millions more people, yeah. the more awareness and research and money goes on them. And it's not really yeah. fair, you know, no, it's, it's, no, it's no, loads no. of other no. that need help. You yeah. know, just using the hashtag lichen sclerosis or vulva cancer would make a big difference because people will see it and it helps. Because when yeah. I first joined Instagram, vulva cancer had 200. And right. ovarian had uh, three quarters of a million. Right, so right. That's changed now, but yeah. you know, we, need to, we need to talk more about it. I'm going to have to stop you, Claire. So it's, it's about to cut okay. it and I'll do it properly. Okay. All right, then. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Bye.